Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can take stress relaxation data at different temperature and make it into a master curve or a linear viscoelastic material model can capture all of this data at once. In this case, I got the data from an old paper by Tobolsky, and uh, he wrote this in 1955. It's a really detailed set of tests where he ran stress relaxation uh, at different temperatures as you can see here on the left. I want to take this data, I want to make it into a linear viscoelastic material model. And there are two ways to do it. The first way is to take this data and then do a shift factor approach, horizontally shift them using a WLF type uh, shift factor to get a master curve and then fit my linear viscoelastic material model to that master curve. So that's option one. I will show you how you can do that. So option two is to not generate the master curve first, but instead fit your uh, linear viscoelastic model and the WLF parameters at once to the data in this figure. And then by doing that, you will also automatically generate the master curve. But you don't do it in two steps, you do it in one step and in that case. So let's take a look at how we would do this. The first step is to digitalize reading the data from that image in the paper. So I used M Calibration's new data uh, extraction feature that I have another video about that I show how you can do that. And once you've done that, you get these uh, segments of response for each temperature. It shows you the modulus in this case as a function of time. So to calibrate the material model, I need to not just have a modulus, I need to have stress. So I assume that this was uh, at the strain of 0 0.01 for my example here today. So the, in, I, I'm going to do step number, uh, method number one first, where I generate the master curve and then fit to it. So to generate the master curve, I will, um, in this case, I used a calculation of how I should shift these to best match a master curve. And here's the, the WLF equation, which has three parameters, C1, C2, and T0. I basically... Uh, in this case, select the T0 to be minus um, 62 degrees C, which is 211 degrees Kelvin. I picked one of these uh, segments and kept that fixed. That's uh, perfectly fine for a shift like this. And then I fit the other uh, segments as best as possible to f f get the master curve. And um, this is a feature that I used outside of M calibration. But in the next version, we will also be able to fit the master curve from these types of seg segments. So that's something we're working on right now. Um, so in the end, this is the best master curve I could come up with. Here are the parameters. I can also plot the results here in the following way. So these are the same number of data points from the original uh, scanned image from Tobolsky's paper, all plotted as one line. Here it is. So this is the master curve that I want to use for calibration. Once I have a master curve, I can also shift this around. We have a lot of information now. I have the shift factors. I can then decide what the, the master curve will be at different temperatures. You can see here, using this uh, basic equation here, and uh, the, the red one in the middle is the, the starting point they had. They have shifted it left and right at different temperatures. This is something that's really handy, of course. And if I want to compare the original uh, measurements that was reported by Tobolsky with the master curve, this is what it would look like. Uh, I basically shifted these out to get this master curve uh, in the end. So this is the, the results of the master curve extraction. To calibrate my linear viscoelastic material model to the master curve, I just read in the master curve into M calibration. Here it is. It's read in as a, a stress relaxation a test, a single test, as you can see here. And uh, then I select a, a, a hyperelastic material model with linear viscoelasticity. I, in this case, used an abacus neo hookian material model with 16 prony series terms. And the reason why I picked 16 prony series terms is that the time scan from about 10 to 11 to 10 to the minus 5. So that's about 16 decades of time. So I wanted 16 uh, prony series terms approximately here. I then uh, selected them here. And you can see I'm searching for the hyperelastic stiffness, C10. I'm searching for the G values, but I don't search for K values or the tau values. The tau values I specify from the time scale. The K values are what they are. And in the end, they're all set to be zero. So I assume that there is no volumetric relaxation in this case. 
uh, the relaxation is dominated by shear effects, and this is typical for rubber-like materials, so that makes sense. And I also search for the, the sum G, which is how much will the, the total stress relax over time. So these are the parameters that I'm working with. And then I just run the calibration as you would calibrate any material model. And they let that run a little bit. The results you will get is something like this. Here are the results. The, the line, the dashed line is the prediction. is right in the middle here. There is about 13.9%. It looks uh, like a very good fit to the master curve. So this is the, the answer to what material model matches the data from Tobolsky. Here's one answer to that question. It's also interesting when you work with linear viscoelasticity to look at the different um, components in the pronic series. So the G values here, you see that G1 is almost zero. We have finite G values, G2, G3, G4, G5, six perhaps, then I get very small again. So most of the effects happen around those time periods in terms of this particular material model. That's just what happened when they calibrated it, and this seems to match the data pretty well. This is a model I can use now and uh, go ahead and simulate whatever I'm interested in. But there's another way to do this, and that's what I want to show, where we calibrate both the WLF parameters and the viscoelastic model at the same time. So if you want to calibrate them at the same time, you open up in calibration, and you have all of these uh, segments that uh, we extracted when we scanned in the data. So here they are. We can see that what they look like here. And I specify for each of these that it's a stress relaxation test. I specify that the relaxation strain was 1%. I specify that the relaxation time was 10 seconds. The time to reach the relaxation strain was 10 seconds. This is an important uh, question. What should you put in for the stress uh, the time to reach the relaxation strain. And I have a separate video that talks about how you uh, select that and why that's very important. In this case, I selected 10. It wasn't quite clear from the Tobolsky paper what that should be, so I picked this value of 10 here. Um, and then I just have all of them in here. And my goal is to calibrate everything at once now. So the way I do that, I select a an abacus, neohookie, and hyperelastic model with 16 pronic series terms and the WLF equations at once. So this is, you go to the material model, you basically select WLF, time, temperature, superposition, with 16 parameters. And um, then I set T0 to be 211 degrees uh, Kelvin, which is one of the curves I want to be, the fixed temperature that I want to shift. I will shift everything around that. And then I search for the other parameters, just like we typically do. And if you let this run uh, for a little bit, the results you will get would look something like this. That is, it matches the data really well again. The error is about 8.6%. It's kind of interesting. It ended up being slightly more accurate when I search for the WF parameters and the pronus series and the hyperelasticity once instead of first doing the, hyper, the master curve and then calibrating to the master curve. So this is an alternative. It ended up taking a little longer when I ran the calibration uh, on my computer. I don't know if that's typical, but it's a little bit more degrees of freedom here when we have the shifting at the same time. But it reached a slightly better fit in this particular case. So if you want to look at this in more detail, I have a slide here that shows you the predictions of the calibrated master curve with all the linear viscoelastic parameters. We can then also superimpose on that the this, the master curve is predicted by this fit, and in dashed lines, we have the predictions of the model. The solid lines are the experimental data. It looks pretty good at all times and all temperatures in this particular case. So that's, that's it. Those are the two choices. Uh, in M calibration, you can very quickly calibrate these master curves and also find the WLF parameters using the approach that I showed here. So this was using, using stress relaxation data. You can use the same approach for creep data or even frequency sweep data. And I will uh, at some point perhaps create videos about that. Let me know if you have any questions.